Uh, literally just before we started, so I never okay. met him. But I did, after our uh, Bosom Buddies uh, uh, was canceled, I did one episode of Happy Days that was overseen by the guys who wrote Splash, okay. uh, Bob Lou Mandel and Lil Gans. And when everybody else on the planet Earth did not want to make the Mermaid movie with Opie Cunningham, they had to turn to guys like me. Oh, this guy did a show, he was pretty good, why don't you take a look at him? And what was the episode you did, do you remember? Uh, I played a guy who came back to seek revenge on Fonzie because when we were young, he pushed me off a swing. And I believe the line is, he hurt me really, really bad. Really? So, yeah, so I came back to get revenge on, on Fonzie. What are the odds that we would have that clip? <laughs> That was, you, that was like, ah, uh, ah, uh, reeled me right in on that intro. No, this so is... let me talk about the scene. In this scene, <laughs> I have come to get revenge on Fonzie. Let's just roll the clip. You can't <laughs> it. Now, I, I trained for about eight months uh, with some martial arts experts really? prior to shooting. <laughs> Really? And some balsa wood table and people as well? Wood, yes. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the cost of that episode was it, it, about $13 million. Really? Yeah. really? The, the special effects and the rigging. Yeah, and gosh, the, uh, I believe, I think I kicked Fonzie through the window in that episode. Really? Yeah. really? And they, they said, you know, you're the first guy ever to hit the Fonz on, on, on Happy Was that right? Yeah, right. I was okay. the first guy. But he came back and beat me to a pulp, right. so it all, you know, it all comes together like now, that. Now, what, what's your best Ron Howard story? Obviously, you work together. You must have some sort of funny together moments. together a long time. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, let me think. Got any e decent thinking music there? Uh, <laughs> am I gonna have to... All right, here we go. Oh, now that's a... Ah. Now this memory will be pleasant. Yeah. As, a, as opposed to forced, like the last one was. Uh, well, we made Splash in Apollo 13, and right. there was a, okay, thank you, thank you for that. Okay. Thoughtful. Did that help? Was that yeah, helpful I, too? I, I also feel like I just got a massage. This is really, uh, this is really strange. That's our happy ending music. My, my yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You know, uh, I am not familiar with that term. Oh, well, let's say. Uh... Um, <laughs> Uh, we were, we were, uh, uh, we shot in front of, uh, Westminster Abbey in London, which was a big day, and we were told we, you will, you will lose the street at a certain time, okay. like w two o'clock in the afternoon. And Ron is, Ron is, uh, look, this guy has learned so much about filmmaking, and he knows how important it is to get all the shots, and no one works harder on the set, uh, than Ron does, and we, we, uh, that day we really had to pound our filmmaking skills and Ron, there were like a million shots and a million setups and we were always on this pressure of losing the street. And sure enough, about five minutes of, of, of two, you could see the traffic getting closer. You've, right. only, you've only got it for another two or five minutes, Mr. Howard, you better move along. Yeah. And there it was, traffic. And when we finally got the, the day, the shot, the penultimate moments, we went off and uh, we went to a local English uh, pub and uh, and quaff some brews. That was like, you know, you have adventures when you're making movies, but then there's just that great satisfaction of the right. job well done. And no one was happier than Ron with his, uh, you know, you got to get the right beer in England. And everybody, it's like a personality statement right. by the beer that you had. That's so right. Ron had his Pilsner or Lager or Pale Ale or Porter or what? I had a stout. A stout. Yes, right. <laughs> uh, but here's the big deal. Uh, we, we had, uh, we, we, we all had two beers. And then we went back to our places and took naps. That's uh, <laughs> that's how wild. Um, some guys would have two beers and go out and get in a soccer fight. We, right, uh, right. No, yeah, not us. No. We went back and had some More snoozes. Mellow. Yeah, yeah. But that was that was really lovely. It, and the history of having made these movies with Ron, you know, we were able to, to share it as compadres and compatriots and good friends. Now, does your choice of ale or brew? I mean, you're in you're in England, and they go, oh, I like Tom. Ooh, he chose a stout. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, you you can get, get in big trouble choosing yeah, the wrong beer. Really? Well, no, yeah. Which because, one says what about Because you? I think a guy who orders a, a Pilsner is essentially a big fat pussy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, I don't. Is, is that what the English call well, it? Is that know, an English? I don't know what the terminology yeah. is, <laughs> but the ones I saw looked to me like big fat pussy. Really? Uh, then, uh, then with, uh... Well, didn't when you, you say Ron had a... No, no, I think he <laughs> had a lager. A lager. I'm, I'm guessing. No, I thought you said Pilsner. No, I no, no, he would never no, have let's a run the, No, no, you no, said... No, we don't I'm need sure. to go back. Didn't he say Pilsner? We don't need to you go said back. Pilsner. We don't need to go back. I'm sure you said he had the Pilsner. He had a lager, yeah. and lager is... Th those are some, some good-loving men who drink those <laughs> lagers. They treat their women good, and they're yeah, good loving. Yeah. If you have an ale, you are usually a college professor right. um, or a sea captain, one of the two. <laughs> and uh, 
And if you're a stout, you're a, you're a, you're a guy who goes to fisticuffs in the alley afterwards and beats yeah. Major Dookie. Wow. And uh, I, of course, I had the stout. Right, right. <laughs> Could've sworn. And if you wanna... Could've sworn. And if you wanna mess person. with yeah. me, finish your Pilsner and let's go outside. Wow. serious Pilsner drinkers yeah, out there, say, don't yeah. we? Fellas, I'm just joking. <laughs> now, I think that's a Pilsner on the cover is that of a, Esquire. Is that a Pilsner? That might be. No, yeah. that's a stout, yeah. baby. Now, you shot, you shot in the Louvre, the, the big uh, museum. Yes, we did. Yeah, what was, was that like? Well, uh, it, it, it's uh, it's magical. You're yeah. there when no one else is there. It's right. it's off to the public. It's at nighttime. Have you been to the Louvre? Been to the Louvre? They have uh, they have skylights, and so when the when the daylight comes in, it's it's a very particular. But when it's dark, it's just lit, uh, lit very dimly. They did have uh, rules: is that uh, you couldn't eat food uh, while shooting in there. And for a movie crew, this is. This is insanity. Right. You you go you work on a movie in Los Angeles on one of the everybody is doing their job with half a sandwich in there. Right, right. right. Including acting. <sighs> What's the line? <laughs> what? How can you do this? I love you. What is the line again? Hold on. What is it? <laughs> How can you do this? Sorry, babe. Stay there, Michelle. I'm almost done. M Michelle. Tell Michelle. Have yeah, a Pilsner. Yeah. Michelle, yeah. Gal. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> so. So they, they, the, to ask us to, the, the food was way far away, and so the, the guys who usually shoot the camera, hang the lights, right. hand over the props, couldn't do it without any food, which was, you know, they got cranky. Now, how about security? I mean, obviously, you're in the Louvre. I mean, it's got to be, because this could be a, like an Ocean's Eleven kind of, you could be a, a, a crew stealing. We could have stolen Louvre. some really cool yeah. stuff if really? we could have got it on carry-on, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they had a rule that said I think they needed a one guard for every six crew members. Wow. So they were, and they were, you know, they were particular. They said don't touch that, don't go there. You could go anywhere you wanted to, right. uh, provided it was lit. Right. Uh, but the odd thing is, is there was, with one crew for every, it, it was like uh, quantum mechanics. For every crew member, there, for every six crew members, there had to be a guard, but then for every guard, that added to the number of the crew, so then there had to be more guards for the crew, the guards. So we actually had guards guarding guards who were guarding. Wow. They literally, they, and so, but it was great to see a French guard walk up to another guard and says, you can't stand there. <laughs> <laughs> go over there. And also, I'm going to check your pockets for Slim Jims. Are you eating in here? Uh, there you go. I'm going to take that out. And off you go. Well, now, what is this clip? This is the scene. What is happening here? Uh, oh, this is a, this is a, one of the scenes that's not in the book. It's at the beginning of the movie, and it sort of like sets up uh, the 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 the, uh, the the stuff of symbiology symbols. Let's take a look. There you go. Here's a clip from the book. Well, good job. Thank you, Tom. I know you gotta go. It's uh, it's it's Mother's Day. Mom's back at the house. Let's We're gonna wait. have a nice family dinner. We're have some pilsners, and I'll see you on the night. Hey, get hey, out hey, with the night the Tom Hanks. Thank you, buddy. Oh, my God.